Well, hi there. I have an MCP server built with TypeScript and I'm using the official MCP SDK, but I'd like to get it up and running in a serverless environment up in Azure. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through three scenarios. We're gonna first off, get this running locally with Azure Functions. We're then gonna deploy it to Azure Functions and use it. And then we're gonna secure it with Azure API Management, which will also call into Azure Functions. So before we do that, let me walk you through the code just really quickly. So you'll notice that I have Express and the MCP SDK. And this is a really straightforward setup. We're gonna create our Express instance. We have our app, use JSON, and then we're gonna create a server, which is our MCP server. And I'll show you that in just a moment. But really all we have here is an endpoint for MCP, which we're gonna use as we interact with GitHub Copilot agent mode in just a moment. Now, moving on down into that, you'll see that we have our streamable HTTP server transport. And again, that is from the MCP standard SDK. And then we're blocking uh, get calls and delete calls and things like that. You'll see we say a uh, method not allowed. We send that back. And then we get down to our kind of standard area with ports and the actual server to listen. Now, the only thing in the code that's had to be changed is this right here. Once we get this into Azure Functions, we need to look for this functions custom handler port. If we don't find that, we'll look for just port or we'll default to 3000 if we're local. And that's the only code change that I have to do, at least as of today, to make this work, which is pretty cool. Now, there is one other minor thing you have to have, and that's just an Azure function thing, but you don't at least don't have to change the code. If I go into MCP handler, you're going to notice that we have these bindings. And this allows us to bind to the incoming and the outgoing response. So you'll notice that I'm supporting the different methods. In this case, we don't need all these, so we could certainly shorten that down. We have a route, and then on our out, we just say that it's HTTP as well. So really, that's it. You have the port that I told you about. You're going to have the bindings, and we're ready to go. Now, the next thing is the MCP server itself. So let's jump into that. You'll notice we're going to hit this api.weather.gov. We have our MCP server from the MCP SDK. And really what we're after here is we have two tools. We have one for alerts. So we have get alerts where you can give it a US state code, get alerts for that state. And if we scroll on down, we have another tool for get forecast. And this of course is just a standard weather forecast. It'll even forecast a few days out as well. Now to get all this going, we need to register it with GitHub Copilot so it knows about it. So I'm gonna run this locally first using func start. Now, if you're not familiar with that, that's a way we can run Azure Functions locally and kind of test this out for real, if you will. Once this starts, you're going to see a port here, 7071 on localhost. And that's what we need for the MCP server for our local option. Now, I've already registered this. This is local to the project, although you could do this globally so it works across all projects. But you'll notice I have this local MCP server and there's our localhost. 7071 and our MCP endpoint that you saw earlier. So I'm gonna hit start. We're now gonna go into GitHub Copilot. I'm in agent mode and let's go ahead and hit the tools icon. Now I've disabled all the built-in and other tools I've installed just so we can focus on these two. And there they are, get alerts, get forecast, perfect. So coming on in, we should be able to do things like get alerts, for I live in near Phoenix, Arizona. Now this should invoke the tool. And once it's finished up, we should get a set of alerts. It's been raining a little bit lately, so we might have things like severe flash flood warnings. Yeah, surprise there's not a heat warning because it's the hot time of the year here. Oh, there is right there. Okay, that's pretty standard. All right, let's get the weather. Get the weather for Seattle. Washington, which is normally beautiful in the summer. Let's see what it has. We can open this up and see what's passed. You can see it has latitude and longitude. That's why it's not exact, but good enough. And there we go. So everything is working there, and that is now the local version. Now let's move from here and see how we can deploy this up into Azure Functions and try that one out. And we've already registered that here, so let's move on to the next section. You'll notice the next entry I have is remote MCP server, and this is gonna be where we're gonna use Azure Functions. 
Now you'll notice we're gonna need a functions key for this one. So I'm gonna show you how to get that and how we can run this in just a moment. But the first thing we'd have to do is actually deploy this. Now you'll notice there's an infra folder included in this project. And as part of that, we can run something called AZD up. If you're not familiar with that, that's the Azure Developer CLI. And that allows us to deploy to the Azure infrastructure with just a single command. And everything we need is in here. So this is gonna have our Azure functions and all the related things like resource groups, but it's also gonna have Azure API management functionality. We'll get to that in the third item here. So I've already run AZD up, here's what it looks like. And you can see all the resources that it created here. Notice that it has the resource group, a storage account, an app service plan, virtual network, analytics. But the main things I wanna point out are Azure functions, You'll notice a URL there actually at the very bottom of this. And it has the Azure API management that we're also gonna talk about. So coming back into VS Code and our mcp.json, I'd like to go ahead and run this. Now you'll notice that the key, which is a functions key I'll show you in just a moment, is actually coming from somewhere. What is this? Well, when I start this, it's gonna prompt me for two things. Number one, the functions name. Number two, the function's key. Now, the reason that's gonna happen is because if I scroll on down, you'll see there's some inputs. There's our function's key, there's our function's name, and then there's a third option down here for API management, which we'll get to in a moment. But that way we don't have to hard code the key, for example. I'm not so worried about the function's name, but it also may be dynamic, and it's just easier if it just prompts us. Now, if we go on over to the Azure portal, you'll notice that this is gonna be the actual name of the function app. So I'm gonna put that in my clipboard. And if I go down to this functions app keys, this is where I can get the actual key itself, the default. So I'm gonna need both these. So let me go ahead and start this up. We're gonna hit start. And I've already run this before, so it kind of prompted me for that one. And that should be the key. Again, that is the key from the default that I just showed you. So we'll hit enter. And it's up and running, perfect. Let's go ahead and go to the tools. Now I'm gonna come on down and remember we had local MCP server here checked. I don't want that now because I wanted to hit the remote and this is gonna have the same two tools. All right, perfect. So let's do the same type of thing. Let's say get the weather in New York City. And let's see what happens. It should invoke our tools. There we go. Now we're actually calling up into Azure Functions, which is awesome, because again, I didn't have to change hardly anything to make this happen. And you can see all the information it gave us back, so the MCP server is working. Now, obviously, the downside to this is that, yeah, I had to have that key available. Now, if you're just using it yourself, probably not a big deal, but if this is something that your customers are gonna be using, then yeah, that's probably not gonna work, right? Well, that's where Azure API Management comes into place. Now I've gone to that resource that AZD Up created, and when I go into APIs, you'll notice that MCP API is already there. Here's our streamable option right here. And you'll notice I have some inbound processing policies, and you're gonna see this is gonna support authenticating into this, which is perfect for customer scenarios. And there's our funk right there, our Azure Functions URL that you saw just a little bit ago. So let me go on back, and I've already started this up, but canceled. So let me go ahead and restart. Now what's gonna happen is it's gonna say, oh, you need to authenticate. Okay, well, perfect, because I don't wanna have to use that key and hand that out to a bunch of people. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and select my address here and go ahead and log in. It says I'm signed in. Let's go on back, and you'll notice it's up and running. Two tools, perfect. All right, well, let's go back into our tools and we'll turn any others off. There's our remote MCP. Here is our APIM. Perfect, so let's go ahead and we'll just start a new chat just to keep it really simple. Let's say, get the weather in Dallas, Texas. Should do the same thing, but now we're in a more secured type of environment. Again, perfect where you don't wanna hand out that Azure Functions key. Now we can just secure it and have people log in with their normal credentials if they'd like to use this. And there we go, there's the forecast. So that's an example of running this MCP server locally with the Azure Funk or Funk Start tool. 
then deploying it up to Azure Functions and using the key, and then finally securing it with Azure API Management. So a lot of really cool things going on here. What I'm super excited about is we didn't have to change all the code. Because we were just using the standard MCP SDK that's available, we are able to use that directly, and that's just great. So thanks for tuning in. Check out the project if you'd like to run it yourself. Mm -hmm.